Hello there, good evening. So, WWDC keynote has just finished within the last 10 minutes, and there's been quite a lot of good things just being announced, things, some things that have, made, that have been very interesting and been very pleased to hear. And um, I'm just going to go over for the next 10 minutes or so just what some of those features are, just in case you haven't caught that video or if you haven't been following it or whatever, you can watch this just to get all highlights and my opinions on some of the things that were announced. So the two things that were focused on were obviously uh, OS X and iOS and there wasn't any hardware uh, this time around, um, whereas in previous conferences they have actually announced things like new MacBooks but not this time around. Um, so it, it started, well, basically the conference, it kicked off with a, a video about um, what developers look like and um, what, like asking people to describe what they thought a developer looked like and then also um, sort of asking like just people what their favourite apps were and why. So there was people there talking about what their favourite apps were. And um, basically they then uh, more or less jumped into OS X. They announced uh, what they would call OS X. Um, Yosemite, and uh, that's at the Yosemite National Park in California, and um, it does have quite a lot of uh, UI improvements and up updates since um, well, Mavericks, which is the last version, it's a lot flatter, more like iOS, and um, has a lot of transparency in it. A uh, new translucent dock and um, icons around the OS, new window title bars and icons, uh, translucent sidebars within that designed so that the, the uh, desktop wallpaper is emphasized a lot throughout the theme and there's also this dark mode which uh, means if you prefer to handle things slightly darker rather than it being all white so it might be easier to see or if you do a mode it might be easier and um, my opinions on that though I do like the kind of transparency on these I think it's really modern it was a good idea of them to include that and to, to do those things and um, I, you know I definitely think it is something I'll be looking forward to upgrading to and of course the um, OS 10 is now free so that's also a very good thing and um, so there's all other features within the UI um, vacation center where you swipe along the trackpad and that will have widgets within it um, notification center where you swipe along on the Mac and that has widgets and a very useful feature something that I probably will use and um, uh, spotlight this is uh, something which has been massively improved when you click on spotlight it brings up a massive bar which takes over most of the desktop and that allows you to search for things. It also brings up suggestions from Wikipedia and such and um, lets you look at documents and things like that, um, which I think is, is a good idea. And um, it is very similar to the third party app I've seen. I couldn't remember the name of it, but when I saw it, I knew I'd seen something like that in the App Store. And I'm just going to try and move on a little bit quicker here because we're, we're kind of quite short on time. But um, iCloud Drive, so within Finder, you can now access iCloud as folders, just like you maybe could with Dropbox and other third party services. And you can also download, uh, you'll be able to download iCloud Drive for Windows as well, so you can sync between uh, your OS X Windows and also your iOS devices, which I'll go into a little bit more detail on down iOS. Um, a few improvements to Mail, you can attach, uh, have attachments up to five gigabytes using a feature called Mail Dock. And um, if you don't have a Mac, that'll appear as a link to download similar to what Google Mail on their Gmail they have Google Drive integrated and basically that allows you to um, just basically copy and paste or automatically place a link within your email so you can download an attachment because there's currently a 28 megabyte limit on iCloud servers to keep you know maximum file attachment size. Um, markup feature within mail so you can do sort of sketches within images, annotate them, you can use the trackpad on your Mac just to be able to do that straight away do things like draw signatures with your finger, that's very useful. Um, Safari, which has a slightly updated UI, which has an, a tab view and stacks, and also the uh, bar at the top is just one long bar all the way across. A lot of the icons that aren't necessarily have been done away with, especially because a lot of things are now controlled via gestures on trackpads, and um, there's just one big bar at the top, which is very similar in you know, the way it looks to the spotlight bar, and it also does very similar things. For example, you can search things like Wikipedia suggestions and um, another thing which uh, I was very interested in was continuity and this was basically meaning how uh, OS X kind of links your iOS devices and your uh, OS X together and obviously airdrop between iOS and Mac so you can airdrop files and such 
uh, handoff, which is a new feature, which I thought was very good, and I'll probably use this a lot. And this is where devices are aware of each other. So if I have my uh, iPad and I have it with a Mac, for example, if I uh, am, you know use my iPad and I'm beside a Mac, because they're all on the same iPad account and things, and it knows based on your location whereabouts you are. If I bring my iPad near a Mac and I'm working on a Pages document on a Mac and I've got it open, a little icon appears in the bottom corner of my iPad screen. Just swipe up on the lock screen and it launches straight into that Pages document because I haven't to do anything. So that was really uh, useful. And another thing is that uh, if you're opening Wi-Fi on a Mac and you've got an iPhone, it'll automatically set up a hotspot without you having to go into settings and you know mobile data and, and you know enabling your personal hotspot and things like you did have to previously if you've got a Mac and you've got an iPhone, it doesn't have to be in the same room. Um, it would just automatically the Mac will automatically recognise the wi the hotspot on an iPhone. Particularly useful if you've got a Mac group, obviously, because that would be portable. Um, SMS and phone calls, so you can accept uh, phone calls and actually take phone calls on your Mac and also read SMS messages, so actually you know, messages coming through your phone, not just iMessages and FaceTime, but actual SMS and phone calls. And um, you can also dial a phone call from your Mac, so for example, if you're in Safari on your Mac and you're, you know, you have a phone number for a company and you want to just give that shop a ring, you can just literally click on it in Safari on the Mac and dial that number straight away. And that is uh, all going to be coming in in the fall, but there's also going to be an OS X beta program. So it's even better for us. So if you're a non-developer, you've got this beta program that's just coming out in the summer. No dates specifically given. We're just told summer, but we are in June now. So imagine the summer is only next a month, a couple of months. So you're going to have to have pay develop a subscription to be able to try out the betas for that. And um, so now moving on to iOS iOS 8, there are interactive notifications which pop up at the top of the screen and you literally just drag down and you can reply, for example, to a text message and you can literally just reply within the top space of the application window and um, that means you don't have to launch a separate app while you might be in a game or writing an email or doing something important and um, you literally can just launch straight into writing a reply which is useful. Um, you can also, when you would normally um, double tap on your home button to bring up the multitasking where you can swipe away apps you can now also have a list of you know, people you can comment with people so their contacts at the top now little circular photographs that people have as their pictures tap on one of those and it lets you sms or give them a phone call straight from within that multitasking area um, tab view in safari and then especially if you're on the ipad you get um, sort of stack view and you get things like that on the ipad as well um, within mail there's some new gestures so if you've got a compose you know a message and normally it takes up the screen you can't get rid of that without deleting the message or saving as a draft you literally can just swipe down now on the screen and you can access all your other messages in your inbox very useful and um, within safari as well or within um, spotlight within ios you've got um, suggestions a bit like on os 10 things like um, app store wikipedia and uh, movies that are coming at cinemas and things like that you've also got within safari similar things as well a bit like what you have in safari on the mac have things like um, Wikipedia suggestions. You've also got new keyboards coming within iOS, the Quick Type key keyboard, sorry, Quick Type keyboard, which has predictive uh, typing and it's got suggestions. So if you're within a text message, it will suggest based on the kind of things you normally say to that person words. So when you type in, it comes up with a bar on the top of the keyboard with words. You can just press those to complete the words for you. And like I say, it knows based on who you're typing to, it's all personalized as well. So you have different contacts words because it knows the kind of language you use with that person and that information is all kept secure and again continuity a bit like what I mentioned on um, OS 10 also on iPad you can answer calls and pick up that means you know back on your iPhone or your Mac on your iPad and um, within messages you can rename threads now you can share your location and you can send voice messages really easily you can actually just put your iPhone up to your well like up to your head as if you make a phone call and um, speak into it to record a voice message and then when you lift it down it just sends that voice message straight away that's a really handy feature um, again, iCloud Drive, so built within apps, for example, Microsoft Office apps, you can like, access documents and also obviously in the iWork apps and things like that, you can access documents that are on your um, iCloud Drive, which is another really handy feature. Enterprise features, more aimed at big uh, companies and things like that, so they're probably not, um, you know, for kind of everyone, but for large businesses that deploy, you know, iOS devices and things like that, they can use the enterprise features and that allows them to um, easily deploy iOS devices to lots of people and you know, have things like email accounts and security settings and apps already 
the PDF documents, things like that, for the schools, for IDT PDF documents, all sort of on devices when they really want them, you know, create lots and lots of devices for their company to provide their employees and students to use in lessons, for example. Um, health, that was another thing that we brought, the health app, which we used to call Health. That's like the dashboard that you can see all of your health information, which would be uh, basically apps. You can use an SDK, uh, the health kit SDK, and then um, meaning that, like, for example, Knight Plus can integrate uh, data from their devices to um, the health app, and you can see all of your health information in one place. Um, another feature which I thought was really handy was family sharing. So, you know, people in your family, you've got iOS devices, you can share images uh, and files between iOS devices that are linked within the same sort of family account which you have to set up. Um, you can access purchases. So for anyone in your family, if you've got a set up with your family, if, if one of you's purchased an Apple and iTunes purchase, you can access that on any of the devices that are also linked within the family. And you can also locate the devices. So if you're a parent, you can see where your children devices are and vice versa and also it now is set up so that if a credit card or a debit card is linked to the parents iTunes account a child that might want to purchase an app it will now come to a little pop-up box saying you have to ask your parent permission to download this app and press ask permission and it sends a push notification to the parent iOS device that lets them either accept or decline your request to buy the app tells them what the app is and how much it costs and lets the, them, them approve your child's request which is really useful and um, photos in your iCloud photo library. So kind of a bit like photo stream, which is much better and more advanced things that anything that you do, everything's all synced and up to date. That includes edits. So if you edit a photograph, crop it, whatever, that's synced automatically, not just when you take a photograph on a, on a device which has photo stream, it, it just syncs it because you have to have that enabled. This is just iCloud um, photo library. You can search for things like location, time, albums. Um, you can use smart editing controls for light and color, ordering, straightening, and cropping. Um, also a new app coming on Mac, but that won't be coming until next year, so it'll be after um, you know, the new OS X is released that we'll actually bring this app out in the future. And there's also a few improvements to Siri uh, and new languages, especially improvements for people in China. And um, the App Store, this was like the second part of iOS that uh, Tim Cook announced, and uh, this is more aimed at sort of developers' names, but there's a lot of new features on the App Store, like you can discover. Uh, uh, related searches and there's a new icon that shows when someone's an editor's choice so you can easy, really easily see that. Um, developers have the ability to form app bundles so if you buy so many apps together you can receive a discount. Uh, app preview so developers can create short videos and put them within the app store listings for their apps and show that to uh, potential customers. And test bite which allows uh, developers to invite users to officially sort of beta test their apps. Um, the other thing is, and this, this kind of last bit here is it's more kind of aimed at sort of developers and things, um, but basically the big, it's what they call their biggest SDK release, and their SDK stands for Software Development Kit. And that basically means that there's things like extensions, so apps can be launched with other apps. So for example, within Safari, you can have a, a, a Pinterest uh, extension that allows you to add things to that account, and the um, Pinterest defines what the UI and everything looks like with that app, and it just launches in sandbox within Safari. Um, widgets are the notification center, so we're long awaited widgets in iOS that has been addressed. It now, if you drive down to the notification center, you can add all sorts of third party widgets into that now. So things like eBay, you can get an item straight from the eBay widget, um, which was given in the demonstration. So now, really easy to see. And also, a big thing third party keyboards can now be installed. So, you know, when you can have any keyboard you want, you can develop and make third party that's really useful for lots of reasons um, but what they have said is it's secure so they're all sandboxed um, so unless you give your keyboard permission or access to the internet for example they can't upload data about things that you might type to the internet for security otherwise you might type in passwords and then keyboard apps might send that up to a server but that's all secure that can't happen without you without you specifically saying you want to give that keyboard app permission to access the internet um, touch id so third party apps can now use the touch id so like a fingerprint sensor on the iphone 5s um, third party apps can now use that, but all the sort of the fingerprints and everything is all kept securely on the phone. Apps don't get access to that, they just basically get told yes or no um, from the app. So, like, say, does this fingerprint match what you've got on your records? And, and then the, uh, the iPhone will say, does it match yes or no? And camera APIs, which allow third party apps to make adjustments to um, exposure, white balance, and things like that. And finally, last but not least, home kit. So, you can use your iPhone, iPad to control locks, lights, cameras, doors, thermostats, plugs and switches. So for example, you can use your iPhone to control 
the lights and the temperature and doors locked is more just the temperature of your heating. Obviously, providing that you have got the um, the door that goes with that and the uh, the light bulbs and everything that works because basically the uh, the manufacturers of these products like the sort of front doors that you can automatically lock, the light bulbs that you can do the mad door, and you have to have those accessories that won't switch anything. Um, basically, all it means is the necessity of pay is that the developers, the manufacturers of those products, can now uh, incorporate those features um, using necessity of pay into an app, so you can have apps that control all those things uh, quite easily. And that's for home. It basically, it's more of a thing that you it aimed at developers as much as much you can see because it'll be more of a feature that's integrated within apps, but it lets you you know control all those things. Um, but the manufacturers have it all set up to do that. Um, so that's the kind of main highlights and uh, my kind of reactions on those things and um, I must say I'm very impressed so far, uh, well I'm very impressed this year with the WWDC, I think it's been uh, a lot of things that have been announced that have been very useful and especially like the continuity so I think it uh, calls on my Mac, I like the uh, widgets, I think that's going to be really useful, app widgets and um, you know a lot of them kind of just gestures and things like your mail on iPad, uh, I think like Safari, you know, just DUI changes and uh, also in Windows 10, I think that will also be very useful um, to have. So overall, I think this has been a particularly good year for, um, you know, improvements and for announcements and things like that. I think WWDC, we've seen quite a lot so far. But of course, it's still on all week for the developers that are there. They have all sorts of sessions and, you know, things like that on all week, like training and just different sort of sessions and labs and things like that. But it will actually last the whole week. And hopefully, in the current weeks, we'll try and get versions potentially that you can get access to different get developer um, accounts and things like that that can uh, have access to iOS betas and OS 10 betas and you can get the videos and show you more in-depth information on those so it's just a basic kind of overview and reactions video and hopefully uh, it will be live it's the first live video I've done on Pixel Lee by the way straight after the WWDC well it's been going on for about 10 minutes now so I'm going to wrap up but thanks for watching thanks for tuning in live and yes, if you like this video, please subscribe to the channel for more like this. And also please check out our Twitter and Facebook accounts, twitter.com slash techtv updates and facebook.com slash techtv updates. Make sure you follow us on those social networks and subscribe if you like this video. Thumbs up for more and thanks for watching. Bye for now.